This is Teresa Matsura, and you're listening to Uncanny Japan. What do you know about the yokai, the sickle weasel, or kamaitachi? Imagine an adorable little weasel sporting obnoxiously long blades on its paws. It appears out of nowhere so suddenly you don't even realize it's attacked you. Until later when you notice you've got a deep cut that strangely isn't bleeding and doesn't hurt. Today, let's talk about this furry little madman and a few other related creatures, as well as a straight-up, non-ironic conversation I had with a friend about the sickle weasel. Would you like to explore the stranger, more obscure corners of Japanese culture? Dig a little deeper into superstitions, curious customs, and all those mysterious creatures that inhabit the land? If so, then this is the podcast for you. Uncanny Japan is where I, author Teresa Matsura, share all the fascinating tidbits I unearth while doing research for my writing. From the bizarre to the ghastly, and everything in between. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, hey, how's everyone holding up? I hope you're all fine and well and finding something weird and wonderful to hang on to or escape to in this whacked out age we're living in. Before I get into the weird and wonderful sickle weasel, let me give you a bonus weird and wonderful bit of news. Remember the Ashirai Yashiki, the legend of an enormous, dirty, hairy leg busting its way into some poor person's home and demanding to be washed? If the order isn't met, it goes stomping about the place, ruining everything. But if it is washed, then the offending limb just disappears back through the hole in the ceiling, as if it hadn't been there at all. And do you also remember our buddy John, who I talked about in episode 102? who said he had heard a curiously similar story from his father. But hey, they live in the States, not Japan. In the southern states, to be exact. He was wondering if I or anyone had ever heard a similar story, and I made a little plea to the listeners at the time. Well, guess what? I got some information. Shiny new and very cool patron Caitlin messaged me and said that her grandmother used to tell her a story when she was young, and it rang some bells. Caitlin's grandmother is from Gorgas, Alabama, so we're in the right area. The tale went something like this. A little girl is digging around in the garden, and she comes across a giant potato. Her and her grandmother carry it back to the house to cook. But as they start cooking it, a giant foot comes bursting through the roof, demanding to know where its big toe is. Yes, it's a little bit different but it's definitely close. Thank you, Caitlin, for sharing your story and your memory, and thank you, John, for asking. So after monkeypox, does anyone have giant feet stomping through homes across the globe on their bingo card? If not, pencil it in. Okay, on to today's show. Have you ever cut yourself and have no memory of where or how it happened? I'm not talking about any cut, not like a scrape or a light cut, but a fairly deep one that doesn't bleed, or it just bleeds a little, and there's no pain. Well then, congratulations, because you were just attacked by a kamaitachi, or a sickle weasel. The characters are straightforward. Kama means sickle, and itachi is a weasel. The old images you can find from, let's say, Toriyama Sekien, as well as other artists, usually depicted as being just as adorable as you're imagining now. A long, furry weasel, a blade in each paw, riding on a dust devil. Speaking of Toriyama Sekien, he's the first one to portray this yokai as a bladed weasel, and it sounds like the characters he used in his drawing are a pun on the characters Kamaetachi which is translated as sword stance, but it needs some explanation. Kamae 
means getting ready for a fight or getting into your fighting stance. My son took karate for many years, and before sparring, the teacher would always yell, Kamae. So that gives you an example of its meaning. Tachi, on the other hand, is a sword. It's different than a katana. It was actually invented first, and it has a more pronounced curvature, and it is worn with the blade facing down, where a katana faces up. There are some who thought that this mysterious wound looked like one you'd get from someone slicing you with a tachi. So it was called Kamae Tachi. And then silly and brilliant Toriyama Sekien comes along and turns it into Kamae Tachi, sickle weasel. I like the idea it's just him making a pun. But I read in another place in Japanese that the Kama wasn't sickle, but Kaze no Ma, between the wind. Maybe because a gust of wind blows in and you get sliced in an instant, like between the wind. I don't know, something like that. But I like that too. Or here's another idea that was written about in Edo-era texts. There is a Chinese mythical creature called a Kyuki. Different characters and different creature entirely. It looks more like a tiger with wings. But it also used wind as a means of transportation. So if you read those characters using kunyomi, the Japanese pronunciation, instead of onyomi, the Chinese pronunciation, then you get kamaitachi, evidently. And from there it became a weasel with knife-like claws. Don't ask me. Just know that Toriyama Sekien drew the little guy in 1776, and it was a big hit. Here's a true story. The first and only time I ever heard the kamaitachi discussed in regular conversation was when I was having lunch with two of my friends a couple years before the virus. One was talking about a little-known park up in the mountains and how she wanted to take her children there to play. The other friend said she'd been there before, and while it was quite nice, you should be careful of the kamaitachi. One of her kids had been attacked by one. That first friend and I exchanged a glance and widened our eyes. Now that's a statement you don't hear every day. Something like, yeah, I've been to that restaurant in the alley before. It's pretty good, but be careful of vampires. My husband was bitten by one last month. Be careful of the kamaitachi. We had to ask for more details about what she meant. She went on to explain that one of her children, while playing there, had suffered cuts to their legs that were totally unexplainable. She also said the place was well known for that happening. And she said this all with a straight face. This is when I learned that the word kamaitachi can be used to refer to the yokai itself and the condition of getting a deep, non-bleeding, non-painful, unexplainable cut. So keep that in mind for later. So where does this creature live? And where does this freaky condition usually happen? It sounds like they are mostly found in the prefectures of Yamanashi, Nagano, and Niigata, the middle of Japan. But in general, the colder regions. But then again, the more I read, the more I found tales of them or similar yokai from all over the place. But encounters are more prevalent in cold, snowy places. That's another thing that's going to be important in a minute. So what actually happens? Here's a typical example of a kamaitachi attack. It's a little contradictory. You're out minding your own business when the wind kicks up. Perhaps a dust devil blows through. Or sometimes nothing at all happens. It's just a nice day. You could be knocked down or not. It could be like nothing happened at all. It's thought that the kamaitachi is so fast you can't see it. Or some believe that it's just invisible. Sometime later, you discover a cut or cuts on your skin, usually your calves and thighs. It doesn't hurt, and there's no to very little bleeding. But then there are some sources that say it doesn't hurt at first, but excruciating pain follows later. As for bleeding, one Japanese site theorized that the little weasels suck your blood. In the Nagano and Niigata regions, it's believed that there are actually three evil weasel gods 
akugami. The first one knocks you down, the second one cuts you with a blade, and the third one applies magical ointment to the wound, so it doesn't bleed and it doesn't hurt. But don't ask me why, because I couldn't find any real reason why this happens, except for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. But if it does happen, what can you do? Well, after you've been attacked, and if you do happen to live in the Tohoku region, you can burn an old calendar and rub the ashes all over the wound. Then it will heal. Now there's something I saw written about a lot, and I also got that from my friend when she was explaining her run-in with the knife-wielding creatures. And that is that some believe the condition is caused by a change in air pressure. That a sudden change in the barometric pressure brought along by a whirlwind in the cold would cause the more plump parts of your body to kind of burst open a little bit. Which is not only horrifying, but also not how the body works, I don't think. I was surprised to find there's actually a lot written about these furry fellows. And while I can't fact check everything, there was one tiny mistake I kept seeing repeated that I'd like to clear up especially because it relates to Shizuoka Prefecture, my home base for the past three decades. And the original is actually much more interesting than the mistranslations. So it looks like there is a similar phenomena in the Shizuoka or Suraga area, and it's called the Akuzenshi no Kaze, not Akuzen Kaze. And it's this yokai that might have the best name ever. Aku means bad or evil, Zenshi is a Zen master or teacher, and of course, Kaze would be wind. So hilariously, you could translate this as the evil Zen master's wind. I poked around, though, and I found one site that stated, much like the Toriyanse episode, when we learned that perhaps Kawai, scary, just meant tired back in the day. This place said that Aku, bad or evil, probably just meant wild or rowdy. But hey, the wild and rowdy Zen teacher's wind is just as funny, so I'll take either one. This Shizuoka version of the Kamaitachi is thought to resemble something called the Ichimokuren, which comes from Mie Prefecture originally. An Ichimokuren is a wild wind that blows through, and let's say it destroys a house but leaves everything else around it intact. There's even a shrine dedicated to this creature, in Issei Prefecture. But back to the evil Zen master's wind, the Akuzen Shinokaze. What does it look like? Well, local folklore says it resembles a person wearing a brown hakama, those cool billowy pants. So you're telling me it looks like anyone? But it's not anyone. It's a god in disguise, and it can kick up some pretty gusty and dangerous wind if it wants to. Not much else. I'm going to end today with a blog I found by a Japanese medical doctor who addressed the Kamaitachi on his site. He talks about how people come in with complaints of this Kamaitachi, the cuts, and he wants to get down to what might have caused them. Again, they are sudden, unexplainable, deep cuts usually on your meaty bits, his words, my translation, like the calf or the thigh. He goes on to say that very often they happen on the parts of your body that have been covered up. So you're wearing pants, which adds to the mystery and rules out a theory he has later. But I'll get to that in a minute. The doctor also says, left alone, these wounds will heal in about a week. He gives four of the most common theories. Number one, barometric pressure change, the one I mentioned earlier. Nope, he says, no way, that's ridiculous, it doesn't work that way. And that's what I said. Number two, temperature change. Because kamaitachi usually occurs in colder areas, some think it's like when you heat up a glass and then you cool it quickly, the glass cracks. So why not your skin? The doctor said of all the theories, this one was most promising. Number three is the small stone theory. He said this is an idea that's been gaining traction recently. You're cold and some gusty wind blows in and happens to be carrying small stones with it. 
Then they slice your skin without you knowing. But this theory goes out of the window if you're wearing pants. Number four, he said, it's a yokai. To the doctor's credit, he added a little LOL at the end of that one. Anyway, his conclusion was that there are things that happen to the body that still can't be explained by science yet. So there's that. Alrighty then, I will let you go for now. Everybody stay well. Thank you for listening and supporting the show. And we'll talk again real soon. Bye-bye. You've reached the end of the show. And I just want you to know how much we appreciate you listening and supporting us. Any subscribing, reviewing, and gushing to your friends, family, even random strangers, really does help keep us going. If you have the means and you want to help a little more and get a little more, we are making extra content over on Patreon. All for only $5 a month. Or, if you like to read horror, you might be interested in my Bram Stoker-nominated short story collection, The Carp-Faced Boy and Other Tales. Hontoni arigato gozaimasu. Thank you again, and I'll talk to you real soon.